my name is Rob Freeman. I'm the Craven and the First World War Project Officer. Um, and the object that is special to me and I wanted to talk to you about today is what I believe is probably the most important historical document in the museum's collection, uh, after Shakespeare's first folio, of course. Um, and uh, that object is this book, uh, which is called Kriesgefangen in Skipton. Just to uh, show you the title there. And um, this book was published in Munich in 1920 and it, it is a collection of diary entries, sketches and poems compiled by some of the German POWs who were imprisoned during the First World War at Rakeswood Camp in Skipton. Just to give you a bit of background information about the camp, it was originally built as a training base for the Bradford Powell's Regiment in 1915 and subsequently used by a number of other regiments during the First World War until 1918 when it became a prisoner of war camp for captured German prisoners. Um, and they were eventually repatriated in 1919 and the camp was dismantled and uh, the site, which is behind what is now Skipton Girls High School, uh, was developed into housing. Now, um, odd artefacts were uh, discovered in uh, residence gardens leading to intriguing questions about um, the lost wartime camp. Uh, but really for, for, for you know, nearly 100 years, um, the history of Rakeswood Camp remained hidden and very few people knew, knew of its existence. In fact, I think most people would associate prisoners of war with the Second World War and uh, Overdale Camp, uh, which is on the other side of town. Um, so, um, just taking us forward then to 2014, this book was uh, discovered in, in a shoebox, in fact, uh, in Skipton Library. Uh, very few people knew of its existence. And in 2014, it was given to um, uh, a team of translators at the University of Leeds, who then started translating the book from German into English. And um, it's become a community effort. So not only does it involve staff and students from the, the University of Leeds, but also quite a few members of the community who have been translating certain sections of the book. Now, um, through the translation, um, what we've managed to get is, is an insight into what life was like for the German prisoners uh, who, were, who were imprisoned uh, in Skipton during that time. Um, in the book, they describe their daily routine um, and also many of the activities that they organised uh, to stave off the boredom. Um, as they were officers, um, they weren't required to work and therefore um, they organised many activities, sporting activities, um, musical concerts, theatrical performances, to um, to sort of help sort of pass the time really whilst they were inside the camp. Um, they also went on uh, many walks in the Dales, under guard of course, um, and they spoke very fondly in the book about the beautiful, Lork beautiful Yorkshire countryside. Um, they don't speak so fondly about um, the locals, about Skipton residents. Uh, in fact, I've got a, a quote here from the book. Um, in which they describe uh, Skipton residents as the following. If you can find, uh, here we are. Um, These English men, women and children betrayed no signs of wasting away. Quite the opposite. Even in peacetime, nowhere in Germany are there so many fat representations of the human race as here in Skipton. In particular, many of us can still picture the vast figure of the barmaid at the Royal Oak, a lady giant in miniature. Um, so, of course, uh, during that time, 1918, um, there, were, there were food shortages in Germany. Um, there were in, in the UK as well, but, um, but more so in Germany. And, um, and, and obviously that was their view of, um, of, of the locals uh, when they arrived in Skipton in the January 1918. Um, now... As I mentioned, they, they describe the, um, the, the, the landscape very fondly, the people not so much, and um, also the weather. They didn't have very much good things to say about the weather. Um, so here's a quote um, about, uh, about the weather. Um, we prisoners were already aware that blue skies were not particularly inclined to smile down on Britannia. But even so, this veil of cloud that generally tended to em envelope us seemed overwhelmingly dark and unfriendly. It rained, rained without cease. I once read somewhere that the English summer is made up of three fine days and a thunderstorm, and only the apples ripen in England, and the only apples that ripen in England are baked ones. Um, 
So, um, so, so, so there we go. Um, now, inevitably, there were escape attempts that were made out of the camp. Um, and these are described um, in a quite humorous way, uh, the, the various attempts that were made. I think my favourite one is probably this one here I'm going to read to you now. Um, this is an edited version of uh, one particular escape attempt that was made. So, no, no sooner had the English checked the first barracks to see that we were tucked up tight, when figures already counted, who had been lying in bed fully clothed, sneak backwards out of the dormitories wind their way along the dark paths of the camp to a barrack still to be checked, and lie down there in two empty beds. The English come and count the prisoners. All right. The next morning arrives and it is time for the prisoners to be counted. Proceedings are soon brought to a standstill. A here is missing, and then a second, a third, a fourth. Patrols stalk continuously through the camp. Individual Tommies crouch under the barracks and cock their ears to the rafters. Meanwhile, filled buckets of water seem to slip accidentally out of our hands and spill onto the listeners. Meanwhile, the escapers have been walking through the night and on the following day they arrive at a village pub. They introduce themselves as American pilots and receive a warm welcome and make themselves very popular. Then fate arrives in the form of a policeman. He demands to see identification and things go downhill from there. They are led away while the landlady dissolves into tears. Um, now there are also um, some wonderful illustrations um, in the book. Uh, I think my, uh, and I'll show you a few of those now. Um, so there's one of the illustrations. There's another one there. And I think my favourite, perhaps, are probably the um, the caricatures of the British guards, who um, they, 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 they like to poke a lot of fun at. Um, this particular sketch is of the camp commander, who earned the nickname "I Can Kill You," um, because that's how he used to talk to the uh, the, the prisoners. Um, he used to threaten them by saying "I can kill you," so that was the nickname that he got. Um, now. I think the reason why the book is so special to me is because of what it's allowed us to do. Um, we, it's really opened up a part of uh, Skipton's history which um, before now wasn't really that well known. Um, so the opportunities that the book has given in terms of being able to make that accessible to the public has been fantastic. It's also allowed us to engage with um, the local community uh, who have got involved in a number of projects that have been running. Uh, these are projects that have been funded by the Heritage Lottery Fund um, and have included an archaeology dig on the site of the camp um, and also next year we're going to launch a website. Um, so it really has opened up lots of opportunities for exploring that hidden history um, and, and just sort of opening it up to the public. Now I would encourage you to have a look through the book, um, you know, even if you don't speak German, um, as I mentioned there are some wonderful sketches in there, there's another one, um, so, so you know, do have a look, look inside and, and have a flick through and, uh, and, and um, you know, it really is a kind of, uh, a kind of fantastic book um, which hopefully uh, by 2019 will be available in, 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 in English, um, so it's, as I say it's currently being translated and um, the, the team of translators are hoping to be able to publish it in English in 19, uh, sorry, 2019, uh, which will be 100 years after um, the camp closed in 1919. So that's all for now um, and thank you very much. Mm -hmm.